Globally, food prices are increasing and it's putting a lot of pressure on a lot of people, but it's also resulting in a lot of experts, economists, and people who want their saying, saying a whole bunch of things related to how do you keep the costs of food down? How do we deal with the rise of, of food prices across the board? And if we look at it from all the way from raw materials to distribution, petrol costs, electricity costs, labor costs, you name it, everything is going up. So what are some of the tips, tricks, insights, and advice that we're getting that is actually causing us to be in exactly the same situation we are? Well, that's what this video is about. And before we get into that, my name is Craig and I am on a mission to live a more sustainable life. If you have been here a few times, thank you for supporting my journey. If this is the first time, I hope you enjoy it. This is not my usual video, but I just wanted to, I suppose, have my say and show that a lot of the information that we are getting from so-called experts is not really helping us. And I want to shed some light on some real things that you can do to bring rising food costs under control. So what sparked me to do this video? I have been reading a lot of articles lately that show up on my feed and show up all over the place that talk about how do we handle and deal with the increase in, in food prices. This is not a local challenge to South Africa. It's a global problem. Everything is going up. And then yesterday I read one article that was linked to a, a radio interview that was held with a very prominent and well-known economist here in South Africa. And he was interviewed on the things that he does and he recommends when it comes to dealing with the rise of food prices. And that's all going well. So he provided us with five tips. And I think in essence, these five tips are great. The first one was to set a budget and stick to it. Yes, all of us should be doing that. We should be finding ways to actually cut our budget, not just keep going with what we're getting because ultimately as food prices increase we keep getting less and less for the same amount of money and I'm sure most of you are not getting increases on an annual basis that are able to cover all of these increase in costs so yes have a budget stick to it great advice the second one was to shop around and most people do that the, the only piece of advice I would give there, which was not part of the advice that this economist gave, is shopping around is not always cheaper. We are so often lured by the price tag that we forget delivery costs, tips, petrol costs of driving to different places. And that's sometimes where the lure and the hook of shopping around really comes to bite us. So take that one with a pinch of salt. Then it's looking at vouchers, and with that one, I completely agree. Looking at vouchers, discounts, coupons, things like that can really go a long way and get you a lot of savings. So, tick, good one. Then we have buying non-perishable items in bulk. Yes, that is also good advice, and you will get a lot more for the same amount of money. The fifth piece of advice that was given was... To not fall for in-store promotions. <clears throat> now, I have found many, many, many a retailer that has taken advantage of this. They use exactly the same price, cover it with a sales sticker, say it's for sale with the price. People buy it. You lift that sales sticker up and it's completely the same price. It's borderline illegal. It's, it's wild. But anyway, retailers have their pockets to fill and CEOs have their smart cars to buy, so we need to satisfy them. So what is missing from this information? Well, fundamentally, what this economist is doing is ultimately working the economy. Every single one of those five pieces of advice relate specifically to spending money. None of those tips help us to not spend money. If we look at coupons, you can't eat coupons. You can't do anything with them unless you spend. You are creating a budget to spend. You are looking for store promotions to spend. 
You're looking at bulk food and non-perishable items in bulk to spend. Everything that these economists are recommending to us to reduce our, our spending is actually reinforcing our spending. And therein lies my biggest problem. And this is a symptom of the system that we are in. And I don't blame these economists and these, these people that are giving that advice because from school into university, into internships, everything that they are taught is to satisfy the system. Why would an economist give us recommendations on how to completely eliminate spend? It doesn't help them with their investment portfolios. It doesn't help them with their investments into corporations that are giving them dividends and all of that. So it's not in the interest for economists to really, really help us or anyone who's in the financial industry that's giving advice to the consumers to actually save money. And that is what I want to warn you against. When you get tips, tricks from people, look at where they are coming from. What is the area of expertise? What is the industry? And remember, that is their frame of reference. That is their area of expertise. They don't know anything else outside of that. So why are these economists and other influential people not talking to us about growing your own food, growing your own herbs, including fruit trees into your landscape? These are all edible things that completely eliminate the need for spending. Let's go through some examples. If we look at a bottle of Italian herbs, that's about 30 grand for a small bottle. Inside that you have marjoram, oregano, thyme, rosemary, and sage. Those five herbs are so easy to grow. They grow almost like weeds. You can incorporate them into any garden design and they will just slot in. You can grow them in pots. You can grow them in an apartment. You can even grow them on the windowsill in your kitchen. Why are economists and influential people not telling us to do that to eliminate our need to buy herbs? You can use them dried or fresh. Then that budget can be shifted into things like, let's say buying two loaves of bread for the same price, reducing that cost. And so the knock-on effect goes of ultimately saving money. Why are we not getting the recommendation to grow our leafy greens ourselves? Leafy greens are incredibly expensive at the shop and they are perishable within the next day. Yet, we need to keep shopping for alternatives. We need to look for different ways of spending, cheaper ways, but we're not being told to grow that. And that is my biggest disappointment with the advice of these experts is it's one-minded. It's what fits their frame of reference and absolutely nothing else. Where are we going to go with this? How are we going to ultimately be able to afford to live? That is a question I've been asking myself. I know that that's probably a question that you have pondered <laughs> and it's a very valid question and it's people around the world are asking that question of where is it going to end? Is it going to stop? How are we going to keep affording all of this? Let's look at something like potatoes and sweet potatoes. That's a staple carbohydrate and crop for many people around the world. Both of those can be grown in containers. They are incredibly easy to grow. They don't need to have green fingers and they give a lot of food from just one, one crop. I planted a couple of potatoes and got almost three kilos in response from one little bucket. Sweet potatoes even more so. Why are we not being told about that? Why are we not being incentivized to do that from a, rev from a financial point of view? So we shouldn't be shopping around for the best deal. We should be shopping around for recipes on how to simplify the way that we live. I would have thought that part of these five pieces of advice would be simplify the way you eat. Instead of having 15 ingredient recipe meals, have three ingredient recipe meals. Instead of going for meats, go for something like legumes that are generally a lot cheaper and probably more nutrient dense. 
those are the pieces of advice that are not being given out because I firmly believe that it's a reduction in spend, which is a, a huge reduction in income tax, personal tax, all the taxes, revenue, div- dividend payouts, everything. And this is part of where you need to take ownership for your own situation. You need to look at what people are saying. You need to filter out the trash and you need to filter out those people that are clearly trying to reinforce their own interests, their own industries, because they don't care about you. That's the harsh reality. They don't care about the nutrient density of your food because they're going to premium stores and getting as close to really cooked meals as possible because they're working excessive hours, making a lot of money, but that's what they want. They don't look at the things that you know, build life, extend life, and give value and meaning to life. So if you want to really take ownership of your life and expenses, then you need to look at what you can grow yourself. Don't get overwhelmed with all of the opportunities, all the potentials. Start somewhere. Identify a high cost item in your life that you are busy consuming and find ways to reduce or eliminate that. Like I said, herbs. You should never be buying fresh or dried herbs. They are incredibly easy to grow and the fresh herb version of a dried herb is way tastier. So you don't need to sprinkle dried herbs onto your dishes Just go cut it from the garden, use it fresh in your dishes, and it's going to taste way better in any case. So eliminate herb expenditure from your budget completely. Make your own breads. Learn to do that. There are so many things you can do. Generally speaking, the two things I tell people is to start with leafy greens and to start with herbs. Those two things will immediately allow you to eat healthier and save money along the way. Then if you want to see some other cool things, you need to subscribe to this journey because I give you some recipes, I give you insights, tips, tricks, I show you how to grow things within an urban environment. Things like raspberries, blackberries, all of those things you might not think you can grow, you really can. So if you want to stay up to date with what you can do to save money, become more self-sufficient and more independent with everything you do in your life, please subscribe and continue to follow me on this journey. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please drop me a comment on what you think about what I was saying. If you think it's trash, let me know. I'm completely open to a debate. If you enjoyed it, let me know too. If there's any questions you have, I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, happy homesteading.